Hi my friends, welcome back to another week of painting. Um, I hope you don't mind that, but this week I'm going to paint two small tutorials, okay? Uh, I have a couple of uh, friends who are kind of really stuck and I've been promising them that I would help them out for a couple of weeks. So I thought I would just do these um, two small tutorials. Yeah, uh, One is of a weeping willow tree and the other one is like a moonlight, uh, just a moon in the sky really shining down on the ocean. Two small, simple little tutorials, small canvases. Um, I just thought it'd be nice to get two of them done um, just to show them how I would approach these kind of um, scenes. So I hope you don't mind. Something nice and simple, but uh, you know, you might learn one or two things. Let's see how it goes. I hope to turn out lovely myself. So grab your stuff, let's go. Let's have a bit of fun. Uh, thank you for all the support. Thank you so much. I've been, I'm very busy with uh, painting at the moment catching up on lots of requests um, and artwork in general. My studio is just full of artwork. Can you see down there, look? Artwork everywhere. It's full of artwork. I'm trying to make frames. Um, loads of framing, loads of uh, packing and wrapping and all that kind of stuff. So it's very busy, which is good. Right, grab your stuff. Let's go and have a bit of fun with these two little tutorials. I'll see you very soon. Okay, here we go. There's a reference photograph for the first painting, and it's a weeping willow. Isn't that just gorgeous? Now, <clears throat> um, I'm no expert on painting weeping willows. I've only ever painted one or two before, really. And the first thing that comes to mind with me is, when painting this, we could use a very simple fan brush. Wouldn't that be lovely? And you could just maybe try dabbing like this, in a downward fashion. Or we could use a palette knife as well, um, kind of on sideways like this and drag it down. Should we try one or two different things? Okay, let's get a quick background in on this. And now I'm going to just keep it very simple. I'm not going to paint the entire scene as it is there. I'm just going to paint a very simple background on this first. So I'm thinking uh, just plain white, perhaps with a tiny amount of black, just a tiny, tiny hint of a grey in the background just to keep it nice and uh, subtle not too bright no, no i don't want to be putting any blues or anything into this i'm just going to give a nice subtle soft kind of a background that's all all right so i hope this goes well and i hope this um helps you out i think it was leash who asked me for this and the one the next one i'm doing then which is the moonlight that was for gary uh, Gary has been asking me to do that moonlight scene for a very long time now, for a couple of weeks. But you know, I've just been so, so busy lately with artwork and with work in general and family life and all that kind of thing. You know yourself. Sometimes it's really difficult to get so much done. Um, I'm trying to do commissions for people for Christmas and I really am just very, very busy at the moment. So, um, you know... I suppose you have to just go with it and take your time and get what you can done, isn't that right? So let's just give this a nice simple plain background look, even just white on its own because there's a hint of grey in this anyway. And we could put a, a little grassy bank down here somewhere as well. A little more white. I don't know if you can see this on the camera now, but it's a very soft off-white, all right? Now let's make a nice green for down here. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and a little black. And I'm going with earthy greens for this. Um, we could maybe add a touch of phthalo blue. Just a tiny, tiny amount. And I'm not going to go too dark with this. So I may take a hint of white in this and a tiny more hint of blue. I want to keep this quite, um, I suppose the word I'm looking for is cool. Just for now, let me take a bit more blue and more white. See, I'm just kind of taking tiny, tiny amounts as I need it. Okay. I'm going to pop a very quick base in here just somewhere for this, this tree to sit that's all <coughs> excuse me and 
it's just very loose okay now i'm going to go to a fan brush and i'm going to start putting in just a little bit of detail on the base of this i might take some sienna and i might take a little bit of crimson and i might take a hint of black and then i might take some white those three colors and i'm just going to pop some of that in very quickly look very very fast just here and there just to create a little bit of texture on the floor that's all and perhaps just sienna with a little naples yellow on its own just to create a little bit of light spots just here and there you know what i mean just a couple of lights I'm just keeping all this very simple now. Okay, now I'm going to clean that. I'm going to move to a softer fan brush because that fan brush is very, very hard. I have a lovely new fan brush. Look at this. And let's dip that in our turpentine, get it slightly damp. And I'm going to take some white with a tiny amount of blue. Oh, sorry, some cadmium yellow with a tiny amount of phthalo blue. No, lots of turpentine in this and plenty of white. Now I'm going to add more and more blue into this. I want to get a very, a very bright whitey kind of a green. Does that make sense? That's not bad there even. Now let me just go along and check. There, that's not bad. I'm going to just dab that around here and there. To create a little bit of texture. I basically, I'm just keeping this now very loose. I just want to create a little kind of a grassy area. That's all um, for our tree. That's it. It's just very, very simple. Creating lots of little grasses flicking upwards. Look. And I'm keeping this light just for now because we'll have some nice dark shadow then later on coming into underneath the tree so i'm just keeping it simple for now i'm not going into too much detail um, we could take a little amount of black and a little amount of yellow and perhaps then with that you could just add a little shadow in just here and there into some of these grasses you see just a few a few small ones But in general, I'm just keeping this very loose and very simple, okay? Now, I'm going to move on to this lovely tree. Let me get a brush. I'm going to start off with a nice medium kind of a round brush, all right? Let me just give this a quick clean now, because I didn't clean them properly the other day. And they're a little bit on the tough side. So I just need to give them a good clean. That one's not bad. Okay. We'll start off with... Let me see now. Could even use that one. Ah, there we go. I have the one I'm looking for. Okay. A nice medium round brush. I'm going to go with just a little bit of black, I think, for this. It's very dark. Perhaps a bit of brown. But don't burn black. Um, the photograph just looks very black, doesn't it? And it is because it's in underneath the canopy, so it's going to be very dark. We can add a bit of light to it then if we need to. So let's start and go like over a side angle and then it kind of goes up a little bit and it disappears up into the canopy, doesn't it? So let's go like that and we have another one that comes over, sort of over like that. And I'm going to just darken it with some black at the very base. And it's going to go right out at the base, look. So it's really sort of leaning, isn't it? All right, so I'm going to leave it like that for now. I'm going to then move to a smaller pointy brush and I'm going to take a little cyanide into that. I'm using lots of turpentine in this because my canvas is very, very dry. Yours may not be so dry. And I'm just going to add a little hint of light here and there as I go up uh, because the light is just catching here and there on some of those, okay?
and I'm just just trying to be careful not to make them too thick. Mine are a little bit on the thick side here, um, but you can take your time and just do lots of nice thin little branches, okay? Again, just remember, a lot of this is going to be covered with foliage, so don't go to too much detail with all of this, all right? Just keep it nice and simple. Okay? Like so. Just nice and simple. And let's go up and let's just add one or two more here and there. Now, I'm happy enough even with that as it is, okay? You don't have to go to too much detail on this. I might just darken this at the base with some black and just kind of push a little bit of black through here and there. You see, just a little. And you could even add a hint of light. Let's take a hint of Naples yellow and pop a little touch of Naples yellow in just here and there, just to give it a little light, I suppose. A little bit of detail. Now the next part is the difficult part. How do we create all this lovely soft willow coming down? How do we create this? Let's try it. I'm going to start first with making a nice rich green, okay? I'm going to take lots of, and lots of paint in this now. Lots of thinners, lots of paint. Thalo blue, lots of cadmium yellow, a little hint of the black, Now I'm not going to put too much black in this, I'm going to put plenty of blue because I want this really quite cool. And with lots of this on the brush, let's try creating some of the shadow on this. Okay. And the one thing I'm kind of thinking about here is the shape of that canopy. I don't want to spoil the shape too much so I'm looking at the photograph and trying to kind of get the outside shape first okay just kind of general you don't have to be perfect with this and then once I have the outside I'm just going to basically come down and I'm going to come down in little kind of clumps okay and I'm focusing on the shadows on all the shadows I'm just kind of generally looking at where all the shadows are where I can see very dark foliage. The left hand side is very dark, isn't it? Now you could even pull it like this, look. Give it a little flick. See that kind of does the job too, doesn't it, quite nicely. Okay. There we go. I go for another little bit with this. Pull it down. A little bit over here. I might take a little black and a little brown and just go in under here with some really dark, okay, just here and there, just in underneath the kind of the center in there. Then I might take some yellow. I'm leaving all these colors now on my brush, okay? And I'm letting them sort of mix on my brush. Okay, now I know it looks a bit funny. It does look a bit funny right now, but let's just go with it and see what we can do. Now, that's the dark done anyway. <clears throat> okay, dark side is done. I'm going to clean my brush, dip it in, give it a good clean, and I'm going to go with some really bright colours now. Really, really bright. So, a clean fan brush. We'll start using the fan brush. If it doesn't work out, we can use a palette knife. Um, let's just try it and see how it goes. Um, okay, let me get lots of cadmium yellow. Again, plenty of turpentine in this. I need to get more cadmium yellow on my palette. Da, da, da. So I hope this kind of looks somewhat like what we're painting. I hope it does. 
and I'm going to take lots of white in that. I'll take a hint of blue, but then I'm going to take lots of white, okay? I want this really bright, a really white, yellowy kind of a green. So lots of white, and then take lots of thinners as well. The thinners will help it leave your fan brush without just staying there, okay? Now let's go up and try some of this. So I'm going to use the top section of the brush and I'm going to gently kind of pull it down. So I'm going to do this, you can see it's almost like in little clumps. I'm not just kind of going randomly all over the place. I'm picking out little sections. Now can you see what I'm doing here? Okay. I'm just picking out little sections. And I'm using just a corner of the brush even for some of them. And they tend to come out and fall downwards, don't they? So let's just try it again. Let's go over here. There's lots over on this side. Let's just kind of go up into a point. You see what I mean? It doesn't seem to be too bad so far. I'm going to add a little bit more white into that. Well, how's that coming on so far? It's not too bad, is it? I have an idea in my head of a brush that I'm going to try for some of this as well. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but I have an idea and I'd like to try it, see if it works. Um, I think the problem is possibly that my fan brush is just too big. I should have a smaller fan brush. Now, I'm not going to go over into the dark too much over here. Um, I put a hint of it just around the outside over here. It's quite dark under there. A um, little bit just down around the front. Okay. And I come out a bit more here. Now, I'm going to switch brushes just for a moment. Just for one moment. And I'm thinking, let me have a look at some brushes here now and see what we have and see what we can do. I'm thinking something kind of flat, but not very flat. Okay, so I'm thinking something like this. Let me just dampen that for a moment. And then I'm going to take some cadmium yellow, some white. I'll take a hint of blue. A little bit more. I'm being very careful now with the colours I'm mixing, okay? This is going to be probably slightly on the bluer side, so a whitey kind of a blue. Now, I'm just going to, you see the way my brush is? And I'm just going to try it with that, okay? Let me take a touch more yellow. And I might go out here and just go down with the edge of my brush, just catching some very bright highlights with that. And let's go up here. We have a lovely band of them up here. All right. And you could probably use a palette knife for this as well, I would say. That would look quite nice. It's tricky like we're painting something like this because you need to have a certain kind of a background as well in order for all for this foliage to show. Um, there's a blue one on the reference photograph, but I wasn't particularly keen on the blue. 
So that's why I just kind of stuck with a neutral background. You know what I mean? Now I might add a slightly darker one just on the left hand side. So I might mix a nice darker colour again. I'm going to take some black, some cadmium yellow and some blue. And I might just suggest some dark foliage on this side. No, that's not bad. As an impression of a weeping willow tree. First, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some shadow in underneath on the floor, okay? And I might go and try some with the palette knife as well. You could probably do this nicely with the palette knife. Um, let me just get some dark colour for the floor, okay? So I'm just going to take some of that dark green that we had and I'm just going to dab some of that just here and there underneath the tree and that will just kind of help it sit down basically sit down on the ground and plant itself and feel planted okay just a little like that now let's try the palette knife let's just try it and see what happens I'm going to take some cadmium yellow at white a little tiny hint of blue I'm going to give that a quick little mix there now okay and what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of trying different things out to see what happens because you just never know what's going to happen let's try dragging some of it down okay Let's just see what kind of texture we can create with this. I'm just letting the canvas take the paint off of the knife, okay? Just very kind of gently. You see, that's kind of working as well, isn't it? There are just so many different ways of doing this. It's, it's just so interesting. I'll put one or two lights down here. Okay. Now I'm happy enough to leave that as it is. Um, you know, I wouldn't go into too much detail with all of this. I will bring a little more clumps of it over here. So it's in sort of separate clumps, isn't it? It's like little rows of that foliage. Um, put another big clump of it over here. So combining the palette knife with the brush, you get some nice effects, don't you? So that's just a nice kind of a simple way now, I think, of creating a nice simple weeping willow tree. And I'm just going to put some highlight on the floor. I think the floor needs a little highlight. So I'll take some some white with cadmium yellow and I'm just going to give it a hint of light just here and there okay there we go nothing serious just a little light and I think that's fine I'm happy enough with that just, just a nice simple suggestion of a weeping willow tree. Um, you can mess around with it yourself and have a bit of fun, you know, add little bits and pieces, try different techniques, try different instruments, try different types of palette knives, okay? Um, you just don't know what's going to happen until you try it. So that is number one. Let me see now if I can find my other picture that I wanted to paint. Um, it's a little moonlit scene 
which someone asked me to paint, Gary asked me to paint this scene. Now, it's really lovely. Um, it's just a little moon in the sky. Ah, here it is. Now, I'm going to put that up on your screen. There's a nice little moonlit scene. Let me change my canvas. I have a small wide canvas here now today. It's just a small one, okay? And I'm going to give my palette a little rub with some tissue and a little drop of turpentine, okay? Just to clean some of the green because this next one is basically just a lot of blue. So I'm just going to clean some of this off just so that I have a nice clean area to work with some colours. And I'm going to get rid of my dirty one that I have down here. Okay, now it doesn't have to be spotless, all right? Just a little. And I'm going to get some fresh tissue. It doesn't take long to do all this, really. It's just a little bit of fresh tissue, look. Let me just give this another wipe. I don't want any yellows in this, so I'm being careful with the yellow. Very careful. Um, I might just take off all that little bit of white there and that little bit of cadmium yellow as well. And I know it's probably easier just to change the palette, but I'd have to go up on doing all the tape then and all that kind of stuff. So I'll just give it a quick wipe. A quick wipe will be enough, I think. All right. Now, that'll do. All we need is a small patch anyway. That'll do fine. And then I'm going to take a little thinners. I'm going to put some nice fresh thinners in my palette. Now isn't that moon gorgeous? Nice bright kind of a yellowy moon up in the sky. And that's actually a portrait I'm going to switch to a kind of a landscape just to do it quickly. And I'll fix the camera now as well. Don't know if you can see everything on the camera. So let me just move some stuff around and let me just move this one over a little. Uh, you can see most of what I have there, okay? Now, a nice moonlit scene. Okay. I'm going to go back to my large stubby brush and I've given it a quick clean. Oh, there's a lot of green in this, so let me just give it a very good clean on some tissue. Okay, now that will do. I also have a bit of yellow on my canvas. That needs to come off, doesn't it? Okay, perfect. That will do fine. So I'm basically going to just draw a very loose horizon line across here. Let's go here, okay? Let's go down nice and low with this. Very quick. It doesn't have to be perfect. We we'll start with a nice soft blue. I'm going to take out some cobalt blue, okay? I already have some phthalo blue on my palette, so I'm just going to take a little cobalt. And in order to get a nice effect now, we need a nice dark sky in the background, okay? So let's take some cobalt, some of the phthalo, and let's get plenty of white. <coughs> Excuse me. A little bit of white. I'm not going to go very blue with this now. This is, there's a bit of a grey in this, isn't there? So let's take a little bit of black. Let me try that. And you can see now my canvas is really, really dry here. So I'm using plenty of thinners in all of this. Now I'll put a slightly lighter color towards the horizon line. Okay. As it comes up, it's going to darken. So I'm going to take more phthalo blue and then to take the vibrancy out of that I'm going to add a hint of black. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. 
and I'm going to just start getting a nice dark colour up on top and as it comes down then add little amounts of white okay and I'm just going very simple with this now very simple not nothing too fussy or anything like that we could also put a suggestion of a few clouds in there if you want we'll um, you know we'll we'll have a go and see what happens Okay, now, how's this? Are we happy enough with this? I'm going to darken it slightly up on top. Cobalt, some phthalo, and a hint of black, okay? Now, it's only just slightly richer. Look, you see? Just a little bit, that's all. And I might even take a little black into that mix and add a little darker shade just on the left hand side there even to suggest a darker sky in the background popping through here and there okay now we have a nice simple background there don't we i'm going to switch brushes and start popping in uh, a couple of a couple of little clouds let's say here and there so i'm going to take my small stubby brush small flat brush and i'm going to pop some slightly lighter colors a little bit of white a little phthalo blue a tiny amount of black i don't want it too bright but light enough that you know it's just kind of clouds up in the sky do you know what i mean Let's, uh, let's try this now. So, going across, wiggling it, sort of, and tapering it off into the distance. They're very flat kind of clouds. They're way, way off in the distance. I mean, something is very far away. They tend, to get, they tend to get very flat, almost, that kind of a way. And I'm gonna leave it, taper, and disappear off up onto one side up here, okay? And I'm gonna just pop a few and it's very loose, you see. I'm almost, I'm using a very dry brush here now and I'm just letting the canvas touch the paint kind of here and there. All right, I'm not putting on very thick bands of color at all. I'm barely touching the canvas as if you're holding a feather in your hand, okay? That kind of effect. And let's put one or two over on this side, kind of disappearing off again. And I suppose it's about the randomness of the clothes um, and not having too many clothes exactly the same here and there. So I know like a, a, a lot of beginners and people who are kind of starting out with skies and that, they tend to put lots of similar lines just like this, one, two, three, and it just looks exactly the same. Just try to remember to make it kind of as random as you can. Um, no, not too random, obviously. They have to have some bit of direction in the sky. But <clears throat> just kind of let your brush dance around here and there on the canvas and not kind of keep everything too uniform. That's the, that's the word I'm looking for, uniform. Now, that's enough, I think. That's enough for the sky, just to kind of keep it nice and simple. I'm going to go out and start the moon and do the moon. The moon is very whitey. I can see a Naples yellow in the moon. I don't know if you can, but I can. I can see a very rich Naples yellow with a hint of crimson, perhaps, or a hint of cyanide. Uh, let me see. I'll try a hint of crimson, I think, just for now. Just try this and see. Naples yellow, hint of crimson. And there's a lot of Naples yellow in this, believe it or not. Let's just go, let's just go for it, yes? Now, ideally, you should leave the blue dry in the background. But my canvas is really so dry that the paint has kind of almost begun to soak in 
and it's covering really well so I don't need I don't think I need to leave this dry for too long and you can see I'm picking up the blue that's okay I can just keep going and cleaning my brush and adding more and more color into it as I need okay not to worry now you can see we have a lot of patching on this on the moon don't we I'm going to start now with just taking a bit of white with the tip of my brush okay just little dabs of white and I'm going to just pop some little white on one side it seems as if the sun is kind of catching it from one angle so the sun seems to be kind of more over on the right hand side seems to be sort of brighter on the right hand side that's probably just the dots on the moon itself craters and that kind of thing so but I just kind of put this bright color on one side first okay then I'm going to take some Naples yellow and I'm going to just pop some Naples yellow in here and there now then I'm going to pop some <coughs> I'm going to take a smaller brush actually small pointy brush I'm going to take some cyanide with the Naples yellow maybe a little burnt umber even a touch of black I'm going for a very browny kind of a grey okay and a little white and I'm going to just now will I zoom in on this for you slightly there better and I'm just going to use this and I'm going to just create that kind of effect on the moon you see that all the patchiness that's there I don't know how this is looking I hope it's okay a little bit up there and pop a little just over here and I can see a very bright spot on one area on the moon I'm going to clean my brush and pick up some white and I'm going to pop some white just in. There's a very bright spot there, isn't there? And let that kind of fade outwards. I suppose the painting really is more or less kind of focused on the moon rather than anything else. Um, we'll just take a tiny bit of cadmium yellow there for a moment okay and I just want to get a very whitey yellow very very white very bright white take some cadmium yellow and lots of white okay because I can see there's just that really very bright whitey color but it's not white it's kind of a yellow isn't it Okay, I'll clean my brush again. Take more white. Then I'll pop some white in, right in the center there. Now, how's that? I suppose it's not too bad is it for a little moon I hope that's showing out okay now where you are there let me zoom back a little bit 
just to show you. Okay. And put more white just there. And there's a good old moon up in the sky. Now I know it's not perfect, okay, because I have a very rough grain on my canvas and you really need lots of thin paint to get this nice and round. But you can kind of get the idea, I hope. I hope you can. Put another bit there, just to brighten it slightly. <clears throat> right, moving on. Let's go down and do the bottom water down here. And it's dark, isn't it? It's a nice dark ocean. Let's take some phthalo blue and some cobalt and a little black. Okay, now I'll start from center, work my way out like this. Go over here, right across, now we could just paint right across over where that moon reflection is as well, just paint right across over it, okay, what the heck, let's do it. Now I'm using very watery thin paint for this because my canvas is very dry as I said earlier. But if your canvas is not very dry, you can just use a little, okay? Just a little paint. Now I need to get more phthalo <clears throat> blue. One of my favourite colours, phthalo blue. There we go. Plenty of it. We get some more of that. Phthalo blue. A little black. So now you can see we have a nice simple ocean there, don't we? And what I'm going to do next is take a small flattish kind of a brush, okay? If you have a small flat stubby, <clears throat> all the better. Let me get some coffee. But something with a decent flattish kind of a tip on it, okay? And I'm just going to take some black. And I'm going to mix lots of this now, okay? Mix plenty of this. Some black, some phthalo blue. But it's going to be very, very blacky. All right? And I'm going to put in a suggestion of a wave. Kind of going across here, okay? I'm going to soften it out. So I'm coming down at a very slight angle and then softening it out. Now again, my canvas is really dry, so this is a lot more difficult to do than it would otherwise be. But it's just a tutorial. Um, this is not something that I'm going to be keeping or selling or anything like that. So I just said I'd use a simple dark canvas for this. And I'm just going to put in a suggestion of some movement in the water here as well. Okay. I'm just kind of flicking my brush left and right over that dry canvas. Soften it in with your finger a little. And then I could take a small pointy brush and I could go up and just create some little ripples in the water, little crests of waves off in the distance, just, just to give it a bit of detail. Well, not detail even, but just to show you the impression of the water moving around. Lots of movement. I'm going to go very dark in here with some of these right just in under that wave just here and there Now 
Now the next thing I'm going to do is take some very bright white and I'm going to take a touch of phthalo blue and I'm going to just add a little light on the tip of that wave just here and there okay I'm going to come down at a slight kind of a curve as if it's curving over and then softening it off okay just to give you the impression of a little crest tiny tiny crest of the wave just starting to form do you know what I mean and then soften it across with your finger that's nice, it just gives you a nice effect, doesn't it? Now, when doing the reflection of the moon, on the photograph you can see it's kind of a yellow. Let me just take a bit of yellow and some blue with a little white. So I have a very brightly kind of a yellowy green almost. Now I need a bit more blue in that. I'll start with this light kind of a bluey colour first, okay? We get some more phthalo blue. I'm just going to give it a little wiggle from side to side. Look, that's all I'm going to do. Just a little bit first, just here and there. Then I'm going to move on to more a yellow colour. Okay, so I'll clean the brush. Still using a pointy brush, let's get some white and some Naples yellow. And I'm just going to stick with Naples yellow because it's nice and subtle. It's a nice subtle colour to use. And let's just pop some of that in here and there. Up to the horizon line, it goes right out, doesn't it? Let's soften it out. And then let's just bring it down like this. You could even use your palette knife for something like this as well. So let's try it. Nice, clean palette knife. I do have some green left from the last time, so I'm just going to give it a quick wipe on some tissue here. And let's take a little of the Naples yellow and some of the white. Perhaps a tiny amount of cad yellow. Now the tiniest amount really. And let's just go across. There and there, look, just leave it dance on the canvas. Now, it's not too bad, is it? Just in the center, I'm going to give it a slight pull. Okay, just a little. And then I'm going to go across the horizon line again like this. And I'm going to kind of soften it off then with my finger, okay? Now we have a very simple thing there of a moonlit sky. Would you agree? Let's take a bit of CAD. Oh, sorry, a little bit of Naples yellow and white. And just pop a little of that on some of these waves falling over. Now 
Okay. A nice simple moonlit sky. I hope you enjoyed it. And put a bit more white up in that moon, just on that patch there. You could probably even put a little dab of cadmium yellow in there, just to really make it sort of illuminate. Let me just try it. Little cadmium yellow like that, and then some white over it, and we'll mix them together. There, yeah, that's not bad, is it? So I would say that's fine. I, you know, you know, you, you could go into a lot more detail yourself if you want. Um, I don't really feel the need to go into loads of detail with this. It's just this for me is more or less just a kind of a sketch um, to a pre-painting. Perhaps I could do maybe a bigger one of this, but I know, I know, I already have one of this type of a painting on my channel, something very similar. So I don't kind of feel the need to paint it twice. Do you know what I mean? Um, perhaps a different setting or something. A different mood, a different scene uh, with a moonlight. Even a landscape or something. Um, a forest perhaps. But this is fine for me. This is, this is all I need. You could put something like a boat or something in there. Um, with a reflection on the moon or something like that. If you want. Could do something like that. I think that's fine. I think for what it is, it's absolutely fine. Let me zoom in and show you what we have painted. There. Nice and simple. Okay. And I'll zoom out and I'll show you the other one which we painted, our little weeping willow. And that is the Weeping Willow. Okay. So I hope that has been at some help to you. Um, you know, you could even try and incorporate some of them into your own landscapes. Um, you know, just have a bit of fun. That's what it's all about. Very bright. Have a bit of fun. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I am covered in paint. Look, paint everywhere. That's a good sign, isn't it? It means you're having fun getting paint on your hands. Um, I'll see you all next week. I'll get something nice next week now, yeah? A nice little proper landscape. So, uh, yeah, I have a couple of things in mind. Hmm. I have a couple of nice pictures in mind, which I might paint. Uh, so stay tuned. Thank you. Um, subscribe if you haven't done so. You're missing so much painting, so much fun. And uh, go and grab yourself a coffee get some canvas and just get some paint and have a bit of fun with it okay just put it on the canvas and see what happens um i will see you very very soon thank you so much for watching and god bless <laughs>